then move on to this bit. So basically this is the other end of the main motor mount, the roll motor mount. So you've got this ring, right, and the boom. Now, the boom goes into the Delrin mounts in the front of the airframe. So this basically, but this goes in where you've taken your eight ball out of. This section basically, as far as the rest of the airframe goes, replaces the eight ball, okay? Now, in this ring, you've got four holes going around the sides for grub screws, which actually hold the carbon into it. But what I found you're better off doing first is attaching the ring to the motor. Now, this goes on the wire end, the fixed end of the motor, okay? So one end says, has the carbon bird logo, it's the opposite end. Where you see the circlip, this goes on, all right? And for this, you need the other two long screws, okay? So after this, I'm gonna have no more long screws left. Now, these two longer bits just hang off the side of the motor. All right, so it's these two high pieces. You'll, you'll be able to eyeball through into the motor mount. And with my two long screws, I will attach that. Again, a little dip of, of Loctite as I do it. All right, nice blue bit on the tip. And that screws into there. Okay. Snug that up. Nice. Okay. Now my carbon tube can go into the holder. And I can take my other four small grub screws touch a Loctite and pop those in. Now, you want to be just careful you don't over tighten these because you will snap the carbon if you try and really wrench these things up tight. Okay, one, another dip. Okay, grub screw two. So I've done the two opposite ones. So there's one there, go 180 degrees, there's that one there, and they're snugged up nicely. Now, I'm grab the other two. One goes in there. And the other last one, lucky last, goes in there. Okay, cool. All right, so there we go. Just wipe off any excess Loctite. Okay, so there's my motor on the carbon boom. Now I can bring back in my center section and that screws very happily onto the back here. Now, if you line it up properly, you've got Two of the M2 screws line up, and two of the M3 screws line up. So these I will lock tight on. It's basically only a couple of bolts that I don't lock tight at this point in time. All right. So unless I say don't lock tight it, assume I have. So there's one M2. You probably don't need the M2s and the M3s, but got the hardware the holes are there so why not it all helps with the alignment so that's the two m2s in now grab two of the m3s okay again lock tight in that goes And in that goes. Okay. Snug it up, snug it up. Now, if I've done this right, you should be able to sight along the boom and along this and see that it is a nice straight line. So I can actually turn this over, run my, a ruler down the center there 
and actually see that boom is aligned with it. It's a bit hard for me to show you, but you can see that's all lined up nicely. You want to make sure everything on this is lined up. You've got to be meticulous about that sort of stuff. Okay, cool. So now we can grab the second motor and it goes up the end here of this arm. And I'm just going to take the servo lead and feed it through the slot there just to help keep the, that out of the way. Now again, the circlip end goes onto the carbon plate. You'll see there's four motor mount holes at the end of the plate. Now here, I like to use the sh four short screws. And the reason for that is that it is possible, highly unlikely, but it is possible, just on this one hole actually, that if you use a longer screw, you can actually hit the wiring loom just inside there. Um, it's a long shot, you may not do it, but I can see it would t might touch on this and I'd rather err on the side of caution when it comes to pinching wires, so I'm going to use the little 5mm M3s and, oops, wire's getting in my way. Where are we? Put one into there. That's one. As you can see, it does actually, it's not that tricky a build. The actual assembly isn't very awkward at all, and that is going to be the trap for young players. Because although the build is relatively simple and it does go together very nicely and everything just lines up all the nice you know everything's really nicely done quinton has spent hours he spent days making sure of the lengths i do one piece of metal work got got went through about 20 revisions just to make sure that all the balances and all the lengths and everything were completely optimized um so the amount of work that's gone into the design of this is quite mind-blowing. Okay, so, cool. Motor onto arm. Now we have this piece, which goes onto this end of the motor. Now, here's where we have to start worrying about how things are done. All right, so there's a side with all the grooves and some flutes and stuff, uh, and a very flat side. And up the top, we've got like this plate and there's two screws and this cutout. The two screws and the cutout go away from the motor. All right. So the very flat side goes to the motor end cap. And again, we've got the slots here so that you can put in two of the M3 screws. The center slot also lines up with the M2 bolts in the motor. And I'm gonna cheat here. I'm gonna temporarily put the top bolt in. I'm not going to lock tight this one, but I'm just going to sit it in for now. And in fact, I'm not going to lock tight any of these mo these bolts at all in this motor can end, because again, this is a, one of the things we have to adjust later. What we need to do, what we'll have to do later, is adjust the height of this section of the gimbal to balance the weight of our camera. All right, so there we are. I've got the three bolts in. Now, again, Quinton's done the hard work for us. And if you get this end of the plate, right, that end, very end of the plate lined up with the back plate of the motor so they're aligned, you will be very close to the correct balance. Okay, doesn't mean it will be perfect. You're gonna have to adjust this later. And I'm just sliding this a bit. And why, why I've put this, the other screw in, that, that M2 in temporarily, is because we've now got three points that we're sliding on, this will slide square. Later on, if we're fine tuning this, 
we're going to take that bolt out because sometimes just that little bit of a nudge skewing it off is actually what's going to be the difference to making it balance or not. So I'm actually going to take that screw out now. So I've got my two screws in. That is a smooth edge running around that end there from the, the bracket to the motor. And nudge those two up nice and tight. Okay, cool. Okay, now, so that's pretty much the gimbal assembled in itself. So what I'm now going to do is put that aside and grab my camera and the eight ball. Right. So I'm going to just, for the moment, pop the camera out. Sorry. I'm going to right now just pull it apart. I'm just going to undo the big nut on the top. Pop the eight ball off the camera mount. Put the camera mount aside and that nut. Don't need that for a while. Okay. Now I'm just going to undo these two bolts that are into the saddle that holds the eight ball onto a little bit of carbon boom. And the sad, those two screws, the saddle and the boom go into the spare parts bin. Okay, now some very important things with the gimbal. What you want to make sure is that the saddle on this pl this bottom plate, the saddle here is away from the balls. See how it's upright that way? If you turn this around the other way, the gimbal won't work. All right, so if you've got th that, that bowing that way, it won't work. All right, it's got to be this section here has to be proud of the top, what is the, proud of the eight ball section, all right? actually the under will be the underside when we attach it okay so all right really important you get that the right way around okay can you see it there so the curve is away from the eight balls okay then we grab the rest of our gimbal and this screws to the bottom of that plate now again at this stage I'm not going to lock tight these screws use two of the mid-size screws, the M3s that come with it. I'm not going to lock tight these because if you need to adjust these motor bolts, you've got to take this off. Okay? So, the bolts I have not locked tighted are these two, these two, and the one at the clamp back here. That's it. They're the only ones I haven't put lock tight on. And I haven't put lock tight on them because I know at some stage I'm going to have to possibly pull them apart later on once I've got all the gimbal set up and balanced I will uh, pull those screws back out and lock tight them all right so there we have it that is actually the gimbal built today all right so our GoPro will bolt on there And at the moment you can see it isn't even close to balance because you do need to compress the balls on the eight ball using the band supplied. If you didn't get these bands, these are just girls hair elastics. You can buy them from any supermarket. And that is now the gimbal assembled. Now at the moment you can see that isn't balanced. All right, I'm going to come back and do balancing and setup and everything in another video, but you can see at the moment that isn't balanced. And if we do that, that isn't either. All right. And here's where it becomes tricky. Assembling this is simple. Now the setup and the balancing and making this all work is the tricky part. So I'm going to leave that there for now and we'll come back and we'll look at balancing. Um, and uh, getting it all set up.